Singapore government is closely watching food prices. It is also making sure there are adequate essentials like fuel. Thankfully, our supply of essential food products has not been significantly affected by the Ukraine-Russia conflict, and we have not had to draw on our food stockpiles. But we will continue to diversify our import sources. We will not rest on our laurels. We will ramp up our stockpiles and supplies from alternative sources where needed to ensure that we have continued access to basic food necessities. The government will not cut or suspend fuel duties in response to higher pump prices because this would be counterproductive. Finance Minister Lawrence Wong reiterated this to MPs after making the point earlier in his speech. But after further questions on whether duties would be, could be lowered temporarily, Mr Wong urged patients to give budget measures time to run their course. We collect fuel duties for both revenue as well as externality reasons. And the revenues generated are not small, and they are used for a range of very uh, you know, important things to subsidize many activities, public transport, a whole range of things, amongst others. Um, so we should think carefully about giving up these sources of revenue, particularly when we are facing considerable revenue challenges already. There are the considerations of who benefits from this. And as I highlighted, four in 10 households, only four in 10 uh, in Singapore, how Singaporean households own cars. In fact, four in 10 is for the average, for the bottom 20%, one in 10, for the top 20%, it's six in 10. So in the end, the ones who, ever, who benefit more are the better off when you do something like that. So is that the best use of uh, subsidies? Diesel undergirds so much of our supply chain and indeed the delivery of essential goods and services. And that is the reason why I filed a question specifically on the possibility of cutting duty on diesel products. We do need to have that, uh, the duty in place in order to as we all talked about, wanting to move greener, wanting to embrace uh, more energy-efficient modes of transport, a, a point which everyone supported, incidentally, in this house not too long ago. And then now, at the first sign of price rising, we are wanting to withdraw so quickly. So I, I think let's have some perspective on seeing the broader considerations and challenges. Yes, we have indeed an immediate issue of inflation to tackle. But we also want to press ahead with our net zero plans and our green transition. Currently now, inflation is already very high. So the big question is that uh, how high, what is the threshold uh, are you waiting for before more help can be delivered? And what are the help that the businesses as well as the citizens can expect? I am not able to give a specific trigger point at this, you know, at now. We, as I said, monitor a range of indicators. It, not just the headline of economic growth, inflation, for that matter, unemployment, but also how it impacts on different groups and different income groups, different occupations. So, and then for that matter, what is the impact of our current package of measures which have not been implemented? We need to see that properly implemented and feed through the economy as well. But the assurance that we continue to give is we will monitor this very closely and should there be a worsening the government of the situation externally and within Singapore, we will certainly stand ready to do more.